Now imagine you're stepping into an elevator with one person who could change the trajectory of your career or educational journey. You have just 30 seconds, a brief ride from the ground floor to your destination to make an impression, share your vision and deliver your pitch. But where do you begin? How do you ensure your words resonate and leave a lasting impact? That is what our next keynote is all about. Please join me in welcoming our esteemed speaker and advocate for youth entrepreneurship, Dame Didi Wong, the CEO of the Yes Academy, to the stage who will shed light on this next topic with a keynote, how to perfect your elevator pitch. Hello, hello, hello. May I have a little bit uh, louder mic, please? Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, good morning. We're in day three conference. I know I love a smaller room. Um, I would love to invite you to actually come forward to be closer to me. Not a joke because I will affect change in your life in the next 30 minutes. Um, and I truly want you to get something from this session. I don't want you to just sit there, look at your phones and not being present because I know I have the secret to get you to a different level when it comes to your elevator pitch. So don't be afraid to come closer to me. I will make you maybe do your elevator pitch so I can help you right away. I want to make this session interactive. I want to make the session a little bit more of a workshop because we're in education at 2.0 and I don't want to be talking at you. I really want to be involving you. So I'm not seeing any movement. I need some people at the back to come forward. Don't be afraid. I promise you I will be able to help you uh, do a bit better uh, elevator pitch. Okay, so my name is Dame Didi Wong. Um, I want to tell you right away why I stand on this stage to have the credibility to actually teach you about elevator pitch. So I'm an angel investor. Uh, so I am kind of like a shark on a shark tank. I've been on a TV show called Elevator Pitch. <laughs> and I used to be coined the elevator pitch queen um, in the industry of entrepreneurs. And uh, the show got me st sitting there listening to a bunch of entrepreneurs coming to, uh, by the way, the show is really fun because they actually uh, pretend to be on an elevator and there's a camera in the elevator where they speak to for 60 seconds. So as judges there, we would be watching the video and they just look up at the camera and they would pitch, pitch us for 60 seconds. And if we like them, then we're like, okay, send them up. And if we don't like them, we send them down. So obviously it's production, so they, they don't go up or down anywhere, but uh, the doors open. So once we say yes, we let them in, they, the doors open, they come on, and that's when they pitch. And so you guys probably watch Shark Tank or watch uh, the Dragon's Den and the Canadian or English version of it. Um, and it's really scary. It's, it's, it's time for you to pitch. You're in front of sharks who are willing to give you $50,000, $100,000, a million dollars, whatever you're asking, um, to help you with your product or your service. And so my, my um, being here today, I really want to serve. I want to be able to teach you something that no matter what industry you're in, Whenever you open your mouth, you're meeting a stranger, you are actually affecting change either for them or for you. Otherwise, why are you spending the time, right? I am very spiritual. And so every single day, anytime I meet somebody new, I want to make sure I call it spreading gold dust. I want to be able to be like a fairy and I have a wand and let's say I'm meeting you, sir. And I'm first off, smiling is the very first thing you should do when you're doing an elevator pitch. And then I smile and I imagine that I'm spreading gold dust all over you so that I can do something to you. I can serve you in some way, shape or form that you will remember me and that I can do something for you. Because that is what we essentially in this world want to do as human beings. We want to help others. No matter what you're doing in life, you're you're a coach or you're a teacher, since we're in education, you're a medical provider, whatever you're doing, you're just wanting to help the other person, right? So if you're helping the other person, how do you help the other person? The secret source, and I'm going to say this again and again and again in the next 25 minutes, the secret source to 
truly being effective in your elevator pitch or when you're meeting a stranger is your energy. Your energy is not spoken. Your energy is in how people feel you. It's in how people look at your eyes and like, oh, I like her. I don't know why I like her, but I like her. And it's, it's through your energy, through smiling, before you even speak a word. So your elevated pitch begins with your being. It begins with how you conduct yourself, how you prepare yourself, how you discipline yourself behind the scenes before you get to that moment where you meet a person. Is that clear to everybody right away? Yes, you have a question or you're just saying yes? Okay, thank you. I have a company called The Yes Academy. So I kind of hypnotize people to say yes to me. <laughs> um, so anyway, back to being an angel investor. Most people come to me always wanting something from me because they want money from me, right? They want my time, they want to take me out for lunch. Most of the time, when you say you take me out for lunch or dinner, I would more likely say yes, because I love to eat. <laughs> um, but they want my time. They want my time. And the, my mic is, can I have a little bit louder of a mic? If, thank you so much. Um, I just feel like when people come to me, you better make my, my time worthwhile to you. Because if you, if, and you better be ready when you have my time to actually make something of yourself, right? And I want to hear comp competence. I want to hear confidence. I want to hear that you know what you're talking about. And that most importantly, I want to know that I like you. If I like you, I will give you more minutes of my time, which then turns into more meetings, which might turn into a deal, right? So no matter what you're teaching, as, as uh, maybe some coaches in here, there's some teachers in here, you want to get your audience, no matter if it's a student, if it's a potential client, or an, a, anybody you want something from, you want to give them the time, give them the competence and the confidence. Okay, so uh, where do I start? What is the goal of an elevator pitch? Does anybody have a real answer to what, what is a goal of when you connect with somebody? Yes. Yes, very good. Okay, so very good. On a smaller scale of an elevator pitch, you want to just tell people who you are. What do you do? What service you provide? What product you sell? Very kind of foundational level of what you want people to know about you. Do not go into jargon, terminology in your industry. Do not go into that because people will start switching off and want to leave you. So on a smaller scale is that. On a medium level, what do you think it is? On a medium level of an elevator pitch is simply to get the other person to give you their contact number. Either the phone number, IG handle, some way, shape or form that you can connect with them again. Right Nowadays, there's so many different communication platforms. It could be anything. In fact, you just know my name, Didi Wong, and after this session, you're probably going to be able to look me up, D-I-D-I-W-O-N-G, and uh, my, my Instagram is Didi Wong Official. You probably just DM me and just say, you know, like, so there's so many more ways and easier ways to get to people nowadays. So that's easier for us. Now, on a larger scale of an elevator pitch, is really to do a deal, is really to do a transaction. Or make a, friend, uh, make a stranger become a friend, a friend for life. I like to see it that way first because, as I said earlier, when I look at you, I want to like you. When I look at you, I want to know that I kind of want to be around you first before I want to do anything with you. So the very beginning of the elevator is your first impression. Your first impression you cannot get again. So if you come to me later on, <laughs> you better be applying what I'm teaching you. <laughs> so I would, I would want to talk to you. And that is really the same with, okay, so when you are I'm giving you extra advanced secrets of how to make your elevator pitch um, really effective. 
I like to go e even into more. So you, you, you feel that person, let's say I talk to you, I see you smile, I, I like what I'm feeling, right? I get your phone number now, or I get whatever you give me, maybe your email. Um, so it's important for you to ask permission to connect with them again. So when you're right there looking at that person and they just gave you your email, like, thank you so much for giving me your email. Is this your preferred way of communicating? That is a really great question to ask people. Also, you ask them, next week, Monday, if you know your schedule well, next week, Monday, I'm going to follow up with you and I'm going to use the email. Would it be okay for me to email you? Because if you say that, and you remember me, right? My name is Didi Wong. I'm going to email you. I know you're going to meet a lot of people today, but I'm going to email you on Monday to ask you to follow up. If you do those type of quick sentences during your elevator pitch, during your time you have with your person, it makes them remember you. It makes them uh, be more inclined to reply to you, no matter how you contact them. So that's a really another secret that I like to give people when I teach Elevated Pitch. By the way, I teach this, uh, a four-week course on Elevator Pitch, if you really want to do it on your own and actually customize it. Now, you don't want to do an Elevator Pitch the same way with everybody, because it, Obviously, if you guys know, if you are speakers or coaches, you want to treat everybody differently. So if I look at you again, sir, and I look at your demographic, white male, right, in probably in your 30s, also 40s, okay, well, you should be happy I said 30s. <laughs> Um, I look at you and I, I will not be pitching you the same as I'm pitching you, sir. You know, it might be, it might be different. And also, it depends on your mood as well. To be very honest, we're human beings, right? So we have emotions. So there are days when we go to a networking event, maybe today's the third day, you're tired, you've already talked to so many people, you're like, oh, do I really want to go to this conference? You made the right decision, by the way, to be in this room because you got me. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Um, but it's, it is really important, like behind the scenes, what I said, you prep yourself because you never know who you'll meet. You never know who you'll meet. Okay, so I'm going to um, give you two stories quickly on how I have applied my tips to my elevator pitches when I go out there and pitch other people. Because as, okay, so I've, I'm on both sides of the fence. So I told you already that I'm an angel investor where people come to me. So I learn a lot from people talking to me. But on the other hand, I'm a financier of movies. So I do a lot of big movies where I have to raise millions and millions and millions of dollars. So I go out also pitching to people. So it's really good that I have both sides of the fence so I can hear myself speak to somebody I might be pitching to and hear like, Oh, that was really good. Oh, I won't. I don't want to use that again. Depending on what project I'm doing. So my first story is about uh, a client that I had uh, called Amy Lynn, who's now one of my best friends. I had. It was during COVID. We had two minutes to speak. Uh, it was kind of like those speed networking kind of sessions where you're on Zoom. Everybody gets to speak. It's two minutes each. So it got to me. I did my elevator pitch, and this girl Amy. At that time, I didn't know her. She was like, oh, oh my God, I she just, you know, on the chat saying, I really loved you. Can I please connect with you? So I gave her my email. She emailed me, followed up, gave her a, a consultation session. Within, I would say, 20 minutes of that consultation session, she already said yes to my $18,000 program. Now, that was two minutes of me speaking at the networking and 15 minutes to 20 minutes of me on the Zoom call with her, and she was ready to drop $18,000. And I want to say that not to brag, not to say I can make all this money, but truly to say, when you know how to speak and use your energy, use everything that you do every day, working out, eating right, surrounding yourself with people who lift you up, and being happy, doing things that you love to do, not because you have to do it. Um, you know, all of that comes into play every time you open your mouth to speak to somebody. 
And I'm going deep into it because elevator pitch could be some teacher might just tell you, oh, it's the four P's or oh, it's the three N's or whatever it is. But this is so much deeper than just connecting with someone in 60 seconds. This goes way before you get to the stage or you get to a point where you talk to someone. So really think about that. When you get out of this room, really think about what are you doing every day to make your days worthwhile, make your days purposeful, and make you happy. When you are in that state of flow, every time you connect with a stranger, you will affect change and you will make that money. So, that, so Amy became my client. We had eight weeks of wonder. She re-signed with me, learned more from me, re-signed, she re-signed with me four times. So imagine two minutes of that networking to 15 minutes of that Zoom, I was able to make about $100,000 from just that, right? So I'm just letting you understand how important it is to make that first impression. Now, second story is really about my friend Nick Hill, who is a man, uh, who is an owner of a super yacht company. I recently met him, uh, maybe four months ago, and I was at a yacht party, and I, I, I happened to meet him, and he's like, "Oh, I'm Nick Hill, Hill, Hill of the Hill Robinson Management Group." I'm like, "Oh my God, you're the guy! You're the guy I'm, I need to meet." And so we exchanged maybe 30 minutes of bantering back and forth, mostly, mostly me listening to him. By the way, the other secret to elevator pitch is listening as well. Okay, so when, when you talk too much, you people will be like, oh my God, on and on and on. You really want to get to know the other person before you speak. It's the best way. If you're meeting somebody new, I'm going to go to a new person. If I'm meeting you for the first time, I would prefer to have you speak before I speak, because then I know your demographic, what you do, how you sound, your accent. Your accent might tell you where you're from. Then I might know your culture. I might know your religion. You can read so much about that person. Then when I open my mouth to speak, I will kind of maneuver around what I heard. So there's, there's been a lot of Indians here because you know this, is, this conference is put on by Indian. I, by the way, I have a ton of Indian friends. So when I meet somebody Indian, I might say, oh my God, which part of India? You, you go into something of interest, of common, uh, something in common with the other person. You make, obviously, you make, you, you, you make them feel like you're a friend already. And if you really can't find anything to compliment the other person, Pick on their hair, their jewelry, their clothes, their shoes, their belt. <laughs> Pick on something that you like about them because it's always nice to compliment people. It's about that spreading gold dust again. So this guy, Nick Hill, I met, 13 minutes, and we kept in touch. I'm like, oh, I would love to get your number to talk to you more about yachts because I love yachts and, and all that. So we have common interests. The common interest is yachts, right? So the next time I talk to him, I'm like, oh, you know, what, what, what do you need? And, you know, you've, you've got, you're managing so many super yachts, you know, have clients who, are, who own $100 million yachts. And, but what, what is it that, you know, you struggle with? What do you, what do you need? So in that moment, he was just like, most people suck up to him. Most people kowtow to him because he is the head of this big company. But when you, when you come on the level of human humanity and you ask people truly, what can you do to serve them? What can you do to help them? You know, so he was like, you know, I'm actually a very aggressive boss and I'm trying to, I have an executive coach. And he started to open up to me about who he is. And I just dug deep into his humanity. Nothing to do with work, nothing to do with the deal, just his humanity. And I'm like, My, wow, it's so wonderful of you to actually recognize yourself. He's like, I'm really working on my patience as well. I have no patience. My employees, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, wow. And I'm lending a listening ear like a therapist, right? You lend a listening ear like a friend, somebody you just want to, somebody who's just wanting to vent, really. And then we got into, well, what can I do to help you? What do you need? You, mo you want more charters. He wants to do more charters. He wants more clients who would do more charters, one-week charters. I'm like, oh, my God, I, w I have those people for you. My network is the ultra and high net worth uh, people who, who have the money to do that. And then so I'm like, well, you know, so then I went into maybe the fourth and fifth conversation. I went into pitching him to become a movie producer with me on a Johnny Depp and Al Pacino movie. And really, quite easily, I mean, we probably had 
altogether one hour of speaking together, and he was willing to drop $500,000 for my movie. So I'm, I'm just giving you these stories because I know if you do your right elevator pitch, you, if you take your conversations, and let's, let's now turn the elevator pitch two words into just simple conversations. If you know how to conduct simple conversation with authentic authenticity and just you people feeling your energy, you doing eye contact, you're smiling, and you truly wanting to serve, not saying I'm I'm a title, 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 title. Like if you come at the conversation with humanity, with really just knowing that person as a friend first, even in this networking setting, don't say, hi, my name is Didi Wong. I'm an international award-winning speaker. I'm a new movie producer. I'm an angel. Those are boring. Those are titles. I'm, you know, just come at them and like, did you enjoy that chicken? Oh, I found it a little dry. You know, whatever it is, something, oh my God, that tie looks so cool. And it was St. Patty's Day. I love that green. Good on you for keeping whatever it is. That is not to do with work. That is not to do with your title. That's not to do with business. If you break that ice in that conversation, that will get you somewhere much better. And of course, you lead it into getting your the telephone number or the Instagram handle or whatever, Facebook page and whatever. Okay, so now uh, I turn to the teaching part. I mean, I've taught, how, do I have five, five minutes? Oh, finish. Hey, they gave me, hey, I'm the guest of honor in these conferences. And they told me they gave me 30 minutes. And last time I spoke, they gave me 15 minutes. I'm, I'm going to take my time because Jatin will know. I, okay, I'll be very quick. I want, I want just one volunteer to just stand up and give me the elevated pitch in 30 seconds. Anybody who wants to? to okay, sit this way. Go ahead. Okay, I will ask you. Absolutely. Okay, so what I'm going to say is, hi, how are you? What's your name? What do you do? Very, very good. But remember, you went right into your what you need, right? Okay, you went right into what you need, but you're asking me what. So I, I want it to be much more. I've been in this business for so many, and I just like a telling a story. So you're not you're not performing. You're just telling a story. It's like, gosh, I've you know what do I do? I've been in this business for like 20 years, and I just realized that you know people read books, and they're not just they're not getting what they want. Yeah, you want to try again? Okay, let's do it. So I'm a school principal, civil school principal from Ohio. I've been doing this for a while, and I realized I could ask my teachers, I need you to read this book to better your, your, your practice. But every time I do that, I can't give them, there's no mechanism for me to give them that professional development time, that six hours, that seven hours, that eight hours, that it took to read that book. They need the, the hours to keep their license going. So I thought to myself, if this can change, by creating a system, a mechanism for all teachers that stand to gain hours for the media that they consume and the time that they spend. Better, because you're giving the solution now, right? In an elevator pitch, you definitely want to give the solution because you're the person giving that solution. And you might be talking to someone who can help you give that solution. So that was better. Towards the end, I could see you were thinking about your words, but great job in redoing it. And I, I will hook up with you and be be able to help you a little bit more on that. Yeah. Yes, and very thank you for volunteering, <laughs> putting us on. Okay, the 2.0 conferences. Thank you. I, I know I'm over my time. I'm not really over my time. They told me 30 minutes, um, I, I'm, and I'm very punctual. So one of the things I will leave leave you with um, that is very important in your elevator pitch is know when to stop. <laughs> Very appropriate for right now because I need to stop. But know to not go on and on and on and on because that is going to switch people off and they will never want to talk to you again. My God, she, he is so long-winded. She is so long-winded, okay? So be concise uh, with your elevator pitch. And if you need any help, 
DD Wong official on Instagram, and I'll give you my email, dd at ddwong.com, D-I-D-I-W-O-N-G. I would love to be able to help you. I don't just do elevator pitches. I can help you in many other respects. But thank you for your time today, and I'm sorry I went over. Thank you. <laughs> Of course, if you pitch to an investor who wasn't feeling you, your vibe attracts your tribes. So don't don't even go there. Just 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 know that he or she is not the right person, and have faith that you'll find the right person. You are not best friends with everybody. You, your vibe attracts your tribe. The, the right people will come to you. So if you don't feel them just because they have money, don't do business with them. That's my be all and end all. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for that excellent keynote. I wanna make sure you guys are all posting and all using the right hashtag. And as, you, as she mentioned, you can find her. It's also a great way to connect to everyone at the conference. It's hashtag education2conf.